Good afternoon. Today is April the 16th. It's Mayor Alana Natchu from Sturgeon County just bringing you an update based on some of the decisions that were made at our April 14th council meeting. Um, obviously, uh, after reviewing some of these short and long term options in front of us based on the COVID-19 impacts uh, to Sturgeon County, uh, we've made some difficult decisions. Um, but obviously necessary decisions in order to support the county's ability for uh, longevity and the ability to continue to offer supports uh, to our residents uh, for the years to come. Uh, and obviously also on April 28th, we'll be setting a tax rate. So we needed to look at the uh, cash flow and the fiscal impacts that we've suffered so far. And uh, obviously considering what those further impacts may be following August uh, and considering the taxes that are paid at that time um, and the responsibilities that we have to keep the water flowing and the roads open. We had already begun some restructuring of the organization following the 2017 election. We had undertaken an organizational review and there had been a number of uh, decisions made at that time that had already reduced the staff levels by 14 uh, in the county office predominantly and in some of our leadership positions. So we were already running quite lean um, at that standpoint. So um, we have decided to as well put a hiring freeze on. So none of those positions will be filled currently. And we will also be freezing any of our seasonal hiring. So that means the 23 positions that we normally would hire for seasonal staff and transportation will not be uh, hired. And uh, 13 of our egg seasonal work positions will also uh, not be filled. This is in response, obviously, to uh, reductions in municipal sustainability initiative funding from the province, as well as increased costing of our police funding uh, and ongoing discussions around changes to the machinery and equipment assessment model as well. Further uh, reductions will come in a freeze on any traveling uh, in 2020, uh, as well as cancellation of several programs. Those programs include uh, some additional graveling, line painting, brushing of uh, roadside growth, uh, sign repairs, and uh, countywide mowing and trimming schedules, as well as some of our scheduled curb and gutter work. Obviously, those departments will triage and prioritize um, certain measures that need to be taken for safety standard purposes as far as brushing and line painting, but the full programs will not go ahead. As well, there will be a reduction in some of our summer community programs as well. We understand that this is a challenging time for everybody. There isn't a family that isn't touched by either a job loss or a reduction or sickness. Um, and, and we take our work here very seriously and are doing what we can to mitigate any stresses uh, that may come from the costs of property and business taxes. We do understand for many of our seasonal employees that is their primary source of income for the year. Uh, so these decisions were not made lightly, but we also understand that there is more supports in place at the federal level for there to be some uh, financial relief for them with the Canadian Emergency Response Benefit Plan. As well, the decision was made on the 14th to make these reductions. And then we became aware on the 15th that the federal summer jobs funding program will be extended and broadened. So for critical or essential services, there will be an opportunity for up to 100% of that salary funding to kick in. So uh, those applications will be made through members of parliament specifically, and we will be undertaking to apply for some of that funding. And if we are successful, we will be able to reconsider some of these uh, hiring freezes uh, that we've undertaken. But as I said, the decision was made on the 14th and with the ever changing um, information coming from the province and the feds, we'll continue to react to that information as we get it. But we did feel it was important to make those decisions um, because the outcome of that is in the staffing adjustments and the service adjustments will result in a $4.2 million reduction in expenses. 
I'd also like to talk a little bit about some of the work that's being done by our Family and Community Support Services um, Department, who is working very closely with the other FCSS departments in our neighboring towns as well. We understand that both emotional and mental health is, uh, is stressed, um, and we have quickly largely transitioned into living virtually uh, and missing out on uh, the physical contact uh, with friends and family. So our family community support services have adapted our services to create some online offerings, and I'll point out just a few. But uh, just so you know as well, we have gone through a recruitment process and we have vetted our volunteers to make sure that they are qualified uh, to work with our most vulnerable residents, whether it's delivering groceries, medications, and uh, taking care of other basic needs. We're working with at-risk uh, vulnerable individuals uh, and seniors and families in a myriad of different ways. We've moved our um, youth council meetings to uh, virtual meetings, and we also have the youth council writing letters on a weekly basis um, and sending those letters to seniors, as well as having uh, regular phone check-in meetings with seniors as well and senior groups. Um, so obviously, uh, we're being creative about finding ways to connect um, to those uh, in need. Uh, also, some creative ways uh, of adapting some of our recreation programming as providing a virtual preschool uh, at home package, as well as some virtual community coffee programs to engage residents with our community social worker as well. So those are some of the examples of how we're pivoting to be able to provide services with the resources that we have. So in closing, the decisions around the reductions are not easy for anyone, but utmost uh, of importance to us is the health and the safety and the continued well-being of our community members. This is a tenuous global uh, situation that we are all working to balance very delicately between the immediate needs and the long-term effects that this will have on our health services and our economic um, position as well. So as we move through the coming weeks and months, we remain committed to uh, careful analysis, ongoing dialogue, and proactive strategies to optimize our collective response to a global pandemic and what is going to be a long-term economic uh, recovery. So with that, I would ask that you uh, stay safe, that you stay informed, and that whenever possible, you stay home. Thank you for your time. Take care.